my wife name was sarbajit sedu and uh, we was is married uh, uh, in 1997 uh, april 1997 she was very honest very beautiful good mother a very very hard worker i remember her as being very warm very caring very open with other people my mother name is amarjeet kaur bal i just remember her as my best friend like the closest person to me and the strongest person i've ever known i respected her a lot um you know she was just one of those people you want to look up to be like oh, if i could be a little bit like her <laughs> one day my mom's name is sukhvinder karpunia she was a uh, honest hard working caring person and i feel like she's a golden heart person the job she went to it was her first day going with a contractor to work in a greenhouse my sister in law didn't want her to go and they kind of had an argument i just gave up okay let her do it just a one day thing and i'm sure she is not going to work after that I basically understood that she went to work every day picking blueberries at around 6 or 7 in the morning and she came home um sometimes at 6 or 7 or even later than that. ठीक ही तो ना जानदी सी कि जब काम बारे तो मेनू बड़ा पता नहीं सी कि केड़े ग्रीन चौक से जानदी इधर चला बैक नहीं जानदी सी कि ते फूलां फलां ते सीगा हले कोई तेंदे नहीं गए नहीं सी वाली कोई गलबात नहीं सी भाई पर इतना जरूर पता है बैंच तुन के ले जानदी सी जब जिन्नी हम बह सकदी सी उन्ने बहा के ले जानदी सी March 7 2007 one labor contractor was driving farm workers to Hope or Chilliwack area it was involved in a very bad accident right from the beginning it looked like a terrible crash and it was a van cartwheeled and then collided with a median on the Trans Canada Highway in British Columbia three people died but another troubling fact turned this tragedy into something even more There were 17 people in the van when it spun out of control. Foremost among the questions for investigators is why were so many people crammed on board? Instead of proper seats with seat belts, the van appeared to have at least one bench made of wood. I had a call from my brother-in-law. He told me that uh, there's a big huge accident on Sumas Bay and he said I am scared if uh, our parents were also involved in that van 2 o'clock we get a call from the police saying come to MSA hospital we have all the names we can tell where each of the family members are so they took us into the room they hold us and they showed us the pictures of those three dead bodies the first picture was mrs punia i remembered second picture they showed was of my mother-in-law my husband broke down and my sister-in-law just lost it i didn't even know how to console them cuz what do you what do you do what do you say to someone who's lost their mother jadon assi hospital aaye ji itthe sanu pehla ohna ne pata hi si sanu lag gaya si pata vi koi gal ho gayi my uh, dad my husband they all came from hospital i saw uh, their face like crying face so i automatically realized my mom is gone I started getting a bit fearful of this feeling of like what if I never see her again and um it wasn't until the day that you know that it actually hit me I remember the open casket and I was allowed to say goodbye At that time was a very difficult time for me because my son was only 15 month old and the daughter was uh, is only 3 year old she was 7 year old that was a very difficult time it feels like it could have been prevented and i think that's what hurts more that that loss of life didn't need to happen and my life would have been completely different she was very healthy and we were not prepared for this somebody is very healthy gone to work and not coming back and that's really painful i like to think that all british columbians had this sort of gut feeling or something that oh my god how did this happen again 
Don't forget, this has been happening for 25 years. This wasn't a new event, these bad vans taking people to work in the fields. And that to me said, okay, big, big problem here that we have to collectively solve because we're gonna continue going to funerals, uh, people going to work in coffins with wheels on them instead of safe vans, safe buses that take them to work. Police investigation, they found out that driver was very negligent. The van was not properly inspected. They didn't have proper seating and seat belts. And they recommended several criminal charges against that company and the driver, but they were not accepted by the uh, Crown Council. And it created a real issue within the industry and within WCB. So there, there was a big focus put on agriculture and the requirement for people working uh, on the health and safety side like, like uh, WCB and Farsha to be able to respond. Well, after that, we had spent quite a bit of time going around to the actual contractors about what they're doing so far as health and safety of the people that they're actually sending out to these various jobs in agriculture. So transportation was a, was a big item at the time, and there was a coroner's inquest, actually, that came out of that as well. The primary recommendation was actually forming a team between the Ministry of Highways, the RCMP, and Works 8 BC to do van inspections. So as time passed after the tragedy, we, we really began to realize that we need something permanent, not just to remember these three women, but to remember the fact that people were going every day to the fields to pick food for us to eat in British Columbia. So we decided that what could be more appropriate than a monument? We were planning on just having maybe a small plaque at City Hall with their names on it, but just this idea of a great big tree came along. And it was basically these three women as branches of the tree, and one of them was the face of my mom, and the other two women that lost their lives. His name is Golden Tree. He's 24 feet high apple tree. This is a uh, represent to the whole worker community. So, Sadeli the Bodh Mahatta Golden Tree, because Sada Parvar ke jado badega, the Sadiya onwaliya naslan jo family hari chitte rakhenge baal bache bi Sada Puniya families ko koi member si. So when I feel like want to go, I took my kids and go over there. I feel relaxed when I go there. It's a beautiful memorial. Somewhere we can go to, kind of feel like, okay, we're with her here, she's with us here, she's watching over us. Finally, we have a place where we can go every year on a candlelight and remember our loved ones. We have a family, Poonia and family, Siddhu and family, Bal and family. We wanted to remember them as human beings, beautiful people, mothers, sisters, daughters, who died going to work and didn't need to as an inspiration to the rest of us to keep up the fight, to make sure everybody has the right to go to work and no one ends up like them and their families. People need to stop taking other people's lives for granted, especially people that go out and work very hard for the money that they earn. I think safety is the first rule. The contractors or the employer needs to have a safe place for the, for the farm workers. <laughs> There's no doubt as I sit here today that in terms of those vans going to work today, those vans are safer. And collectively as a society, we have to make sure that it's unacceptable to risk people's lives to be in business. We must continue to advocate for safety for all workers. Otherwise, one by one we will lose it.